G'day. Look at this. I see brass. Why is there brass there? Why? Why why would you do this? Like seriously, like I am baffled. Why? Really just why? Like why? <laughs> Like, this is just nuts. I mean, what some idiot's done here, and I'm going to be pretty honest, this person is an idiot, is they've tried to, I would say this watch has had stopping issues, and they've just entirely attacked the wrong problem. Um, I mean, I've checked the balance, the balance is flat, so there's no reason why it would be hitting the, uh, the pallet cock there. But some idiot has decided that that's the issue, and instead of actually looking further and trying to really troubleshoot the thing, they've just sort of hit it with a file. I mean, it's some of the worst file work I've seen ever. It's just garbage. I mean, I, I don't want to swear on video, but certainly the stream of language that came out of my mouth when I saw this was pretty intense. I mean, we're talking, uh, we're talking profanities and uh, all sorts of stuff. So, like... <laughs> The other thing they've done here is that in an attempt to sort it out, they've stuffed around with the um, the balance, uh, the bottom um, balance uh, shock protected jewel setting there, and I mean, look at it. Just why? See all those scratches? It's also dented. It's caved in, so I'm probably going to have to replace that. But why would you do that? I mean, just turning it around. I mean, you you look at the um, you look at the the barrel here, right? See that see that gold ring, that brass ring. Yeah. So what that means is it's got uh, barrel arbor wear. I mean, this thing has got more. Uh, I mean, this barrel rocks more than a Spinal Tap gig. I mean, look at this, right? Hang on, I'll try and get it on the side, but like seriously. Hang on, this is a little bit fiddly. I'm just going to take it out just so you can see it. See that? Hang on. I'm really not getting the full effect here. Let me just move it around. This is fiddly. This uh, movement's going in the cleaning machine anyway, so I'm not too sort of bothered about getting it dirty. But I just want to show like the actual problem here. So hang on. See that? Look at that. Yeah, it'd be worse except that it's been over oiled as well. So the oil's sort of taking up a little bit of the space on the barrel, but really like, just why? Here's your problem. Not here, right? Not, not here. Problem, prob, hang on. Problem, problem not here. Right? Problem here, not here. Let's uh, just take that off and just have a closer look at it. I'd love to swear on camera right now. Well, if any watchmaker that does this sort of work can explain to me why you do this and literally I mean, the amount of time it would have taken to file that and do that work would have been longer than actually just replacing the part and really troubleshooting the problem property properly. So, and the other thing that baffles me is these aren't even rare movements. This is a 6119. I mean, you can buy them by the bucket load for not much. And, like... They're just ubiquitous. I mean, this part alone is used on 
several, like most of Seiko's movements through the 70s and the 60s. Just why? Why would you do it? I mean, it must have taken him at least like 45 minutes to file that and mess around with it. And also, I mean, adjusting the, um, the jewel down there, I mean, that takes a while. Easily 10 to 20 minutes just to get that right. Just, and then if we have a look, if we just take the barrel off, I mean, I can see a whole bunch of scratches around here, right? So what this peanut's done is he's tried to scratch brass or try and squash the brass out a bit to take up the barrel arbor gap. I mean, the, the, the part to repair that is not, I mean, I could make a bush, I reckon, in 25 minutes to go in there if I didn't put a jewel in, right? So that's less time than the amount of time stuffing around with all this. I mean, look at it. Seriously, just like, why? I mean, like I said, if anyone, if, if any watchmaker wants to chime in, like seriously, it's war on crap watchmaking. I mean, if anyone wants to chime in and explain to me why you do that sort of work, please, please go for it. I'm happy to be convinced. If anyone can give me a really good reason why that would be considered acceptable, I'm happy to change my mind. But what I'm looking at there is just crap. I mean, imagine if you took your car to a mechanic, right? And he couldn't be bothered repairing the engine properly. Or instead of replacing the fuel hose, he just put duct tape on it, right? Can you imagine how many fires we'd have, like car fires? And I mean, car fires are dangerous stuff, right? Usually you die. So I understand that there's not a massive safety issue with these things, but it just, I mean, for me, just trying to get wrap my head around this just is baffling. I mean, even just to comprehend why you do this, to do the job properly would take less time than stuffing around with this crap. So I'm I'm just at a loss to explain like why you do this. It's just I know I sound excessively upset, but seriously, I mean I see this sort of stuff all the time. This is the worst one for a while. I reckon for maybe three months. Um, I mean we had a I had a video not that long ago with the six one three eight that had the bodge part on the plate, but like, this is just new, new territory. I mean, even just what they've done there, I mean, that's not going to work in a million years. It's just, it's baffling, absolutely baffling. I mean, even when we put that aside and we start looking at the dial, um, I'll just actually try to bring this over in a way where I can't damage it. Uh, hang on, we'll just put it in a little uh, little holder here. And, I mean, it's a beautiful blue dial, right? So, seeing as this beautiful blue dial, why, why would you cover it in quick grip? See that? Hang on. Just, there we go. See that? See that brown stuff? Like around the date window there. That's contact adhesive. So what's happened is the date window's come out and instead of adhe adhering it from the back where there's loads of room, this idiot has used contact adhesive on the front. Why would you do that? And I mean then looking at the rest of it, you can see around where the, where the hands go in, right? They haven't covered the dial properly when removing the hands and they've stuck a Presto tool in there and just the corners of the Presto tool have scratched what is actually quite a delicate finish. I mean, this is meant to be a high gloss finish and it's just scratched it. And the problem is the way they do these, and I've pulled one apart before, is they silver the dial and then they put uh, the semi-clear blue on and then they put a clear lacquer over the top. So they've scratched the clear lacquer. And then you look over in the corner here, there's like a scratch there, like why is that there? Like, what did you do that would cause that? I mean, I, I, 
I mean, like any watchmaker, I have scratched a dial before, but not like that. Uh, I mean, if you even look at the back of this thing, I'll just move it over. I mean, the amount of space that is there for you. I mean, look at all that space. It's not a tight corner to put adhesive in. But the idiot's done it from the front. Well, what's wrong with you? So anyway, one more note about this. So we'll just bring the case over. Case looks good, right? Hang on. We'll just zoom it out. So the case looks good, right? Looks pretty good. Not too bad, right? So why would you do this? See that? See that? Hang on. Hear that? That's plastic. So what this idiot has done is instead of getting the correct uh, glass crystal, they've stuck a plastic one in there. All right? Now the problem with this is, is that, see that seal in there? That's the old style uh, EC3160 seal before they went to the nitrile one. The, I call them the white seal. I think it's a piece of crap. I mean, those white seals, they just turn to powder, right? Absolutely useless. You cannot reuse them. So I bet you when I pull that out, there's going to be a crack in it. Level of water resistance, I'm going to guess is near zero. But what I might do is I'm so annoyed upset and all those sorts of things I had a few people email me saying they like the explosive testing so I think I need to give it what it deserves so what I'm going to do is I'm going to give it a real chance this will be another opportunity to test uh, these plastic replacement crystals as this is a copy of the 320W10 which is the one used in the 6, uh, 6105 I think it's a really good opportunity to test whether the plastic alternatives actually really work well. I mean, I see them come up all the time. People try to sell them to me and always say no. But we'll find out why they're no bloody good. <laughs> so um, I'm going to put the bezel back on. I'm going to put a junk movement in there. And I'll put some seals in. And we'll give it a go and just see how good these plastic crystals are. I, mean, I had one, uh, one guy, uh, one supplier contact me once and say, yeah, we've got these new plastic crystals for these. They're fantastic. Everyone's really happy. And I asked him, do they pass a, water, uh, a, water, a pressure test? Oh, we don't know. Well, I mean, if the product's that good, you would have tested it, right? Oh, no, 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 we don't do that. All right, well, I'll do their testing for them. So I'm just going to stop this here. I'm just going to go over the pressure tester and uh, we're going to blow this thing up. All right, I'm back, and here we go. So that's set up. You can see there, sort of. So I've just put an old movement in there that's never going to be a watch again. Uh, put it back together, put some seals in there, and it's still got our wonderful, fantastic replacement uh, plastic crystal in there. So I'm just going to put it in the pressure tester. We're going to start it at uh, 50 meters or 5 bar. So setting the sensor there, that over there is not a bottle of urine. I'm trying to get off caffeinated drinks, so I'm trying to transition onto cordial. I found it pretty difficult. Anyway, so we're going to try it 50 meters and we'll see if it blows up. So there we go. Uh, what are we doing there? So the crystal is moving up slightly because that's vacuum, so it's sucking. So you can see there the figures are going, that's measuring the, uh, the sensor going up. Look, if you, like, I had a, if you like videos of me blowing stuff up, I can do more of them. We can do some really cool stuff like maybe put 12 volts on some quartz circuits and see what happens obviously what's going to happen is the smoke will get out and uh, I'm not I'll just wait for that to finish uh, 
uh, any second now. So, uh, as I was saying, um, there we go. It's just letting the air out now. So, I just failed the five bar test. Yeah, so if I put 12 volts on a quartz circuit, obviously the smoke is going to get out. And unfortunately, I'm not a trained smoke technician to put the smoke back in. That's an old Australian joke. So, I won't be able to repair it. But, you know, we can do some cool stuff. We can put it on the quartz tester, which is just there. Hang on. Which is just there. Under the pressure tester there. You know, maybe it'll do something cool before the smoke gets out. Who knows? But uh, if anyone wants to see me blow stuff up or you know, make more crystals explode or something like that, uh, just put a comment in the comments and we can do more of that. And I've just turned it up to 100 meters now, so we'll give it another shot. So that was a total fail. So basically what happened is the uh, it passed the vacuum test, so it was still within the limit of the crystal lifting up when it was sucked. But when it was pushed down, uh, which is the pressure test, basically air was getting in. And uh, either that or the crystal flexed too much. And it went outside of the range of the sensor. So if the crystal flexes that much, it's a, it's a fail because it shouldn't. So with these, because they've got a, uh, a flexible rubber seal holding the crystal in, Really, you shouldn't have two flexible materials together. I mean, it's the stupidest thing I've ever heard of. Uh, why would you do that? Um, it's meant to be glass uh, going into rubber so that when the glass is pushed down, it, splay, it sort of splays the rubber out, which increases the uh, water resistance. But when you've got two flexible materials there, all that's going to happen is the crystal's going to buckle, right? It's going to bend. It's going to go like that. And you're actually going to have less... Uh, pressure uh, less water resistance I mean it's just stupid so we'll try it on a hundred hopefully it'll blow up like, I don't know why people do this sort of crap I mean really just when you think about it even for 35 seconds I mean what's gonna happen when you got plastic on plastic it's gonna bend right or plastic on rubber I mean it's gonna bend even more so, I don't know, people just don't think. So, yeah, it seems to be... Looks like it's going to pass the vacuum test, which is good, because then we'll get the pressure in there and hopefully make it go bang. I hope everyone likes the ranty video. Oh, that's a bit out of character for me. Normally I'm on my best behaviour, but today, no. Also, shout out to uh, Lewis Rossman at the Rossman Group, who fixes uh, iPads and MacBooks and stuff like that. He's really uh, inspired me to get cranky and just be honest about it. I heard some uh, pops in there, so I'm hoping that's blown the crystal out. Of course, you can see there, I mean, it's, it's gone way out of... This will probably part... There we go, I just heard a, heard a twang then. So, I mean, that's just gone way out of spec, right? It shouldn't look like that at all. I mean, when you actually look at the figures there and work out how much movement that is, that's just heaps. And you can see there it's lost sensor contact, which means the crystal's either buckled or it's just exploded. And, I mean, with a glass crystal, that just never happens. I mean, it's measuring the drop on the sensor, but, I mean, the drop's going to be, like, huge because there's nothing there. So that was a false pass. There we go. We got it to crack. So we'll just bring that up close. See that? Crack right across the top. So that's what the fantastic replacement uh, 6105 crystals are all about. Can't even pass 100 meters. What a piece of crap. Seriously.
What a piece of crap. Look at it. Like, why would you do it? I mean, even the Asian replacement 6105 crystals that are flat on top perform better than that. So there you go. That's crap work yet again. So anyway, I'll leave that there. And uh, yeah, feel free to post in the comments. Let me know what you think. If you want to see more stuff exploding, you want to see some smoke or something, I'm sure we can generate it. And uh, thanks for watching. We'll leave it there. And I'll catch up with you again soon.